Marty G's, what's up, bro? I need you on here, man. I was going to call you, too. I start swinging it around to you, DJ Mackey, Mal G's, everybody, man. What's up? Honey Brown, I'm not feeling too good right now. I got some crazy ass news. If you ain't get it yet, you about to. Yeah. I'm example of the show must go on. Yeah, I'm fucking sick. I'm sick. Marissa, what's up? I got the right person on here to talk to tonight, though. I'll tell you that. Yeah, I'm doing... Yeah, I'm doing another movie. Six nine. It's bad, bro. It's a bad white boy. My guess right there, man. Yeah. The bull black the bull black hero. Black the hero. <laughs> <laughs> black the hero, not black the Nero. Black the hero. You come right on bed now. I'm, you know, I'm bit master. I'll start with you. I'm, I'm gonna get a proper introduction, man. I, you know, I ain't nobody. No, I'm just a regular dude to do regular things, and people uh, don't uh, nah. understand that they regular because regular people ain't doing them no more. Let me tell you something though. I would have to introduce you as a motivational speaker. No. Know why? I'm gonna tell you why. Can I tell you why? Go ahead. Because you might not think so, because you think that you 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 on some regular, right? But you motivate people. When you first when you first came home, and we're gonna talk about that, right? You was everywhere. You came out that motherfucker like a bed out of hell, right? People <laughs> don't know. This is the shit you used to tell me you was gonna do when we used to talk when you was in prison, right? Yeah. You come home, you do your shit, and you make people, your first joints was get up off the couch. What are you doing? Why are you sitting there? Why do you think you can't do it? Push-ups in the rain, jumping out of this, doing this, that, and the third. And whether you know it or not, but I know you do, that motivates some people that's not just extremely lazy to say, fuck, I can do it. You, you probably made so many people do go get that job that they didn't know they can get or go a, a, a be a better father or treat a woman better or whatever the case may be, you motivated a couple hundred, if not thousands of people to do that. You feel know what I'm saying? And I'm going to tell you why I think you did it because it wasn't just your words. You came home and you surpassed a lot of people. People don't know. You didn't, you didn't know all these people when you was born. You knew real people, but you didn't know all these mainstream people that you know what I'm saying I'm gonna say I didn't surpass people because I'm the only reason I'm gonna say that is because of this. You surpass people when you when when you're competing or you're you're having to compete with them. A lot of people is not what they want to be at in life yet because they probably ain't go through certain shit. You see what I'm saying? Like like for instance, you know, it's people that gotta go through a journey first. You see what I'm saying? I believe God gonna test you, then he's gonna bless you. And I'm saying on the tip, like you gotta. Some people going to go through some stuff. They're going to go through some shit, Black. And, like, if I ain't go through what I went through, I probably got killed. I, you know, anything could have happened. You know what I mean? And I just, I believe, and that's why I really believe that there's no age limit on success. Like, I had a conversation with West Side Gun last week, about a week ago. We was doing a live. We was talking. And I was just like, you know, because he got a song called uh, Be Proud of Me, right? Proud of him. Mm -hmm. He talks about how everybody count him out. His baby mommy would look at him like, nigga, you a nut, man. You running around here trying to rap, nigga. You this old, this and the third. Get your nut ass out of here. You know that tip, right? right? He kept going. He said, you know what? I wasn't even mad at him. 
You know, she felt that way. He said, I was sleeping on my homie couch. Uh -huh. When I was going, when she called, she talked filthy to me. But I ain't, I ain't let go. My thing was, I came home 37, but I still had fire in me like I was 17 because my life was put on hold. And I didn't have the experience life like you, Gil, or anybody else that stayed out here to reach the age that we are now. Because that, that experience through life, what it do is, of being out here in the real world, it could fatigue you. And it can right. have you second guessing yourself, whereas though you'll finesse yourself out of your dreams because you'll be saying, ah, the chances you might have took, and I'm talking about legit chances you might have took when you were 17 because you was just a risk taker and you ain't give a fuck. You might don't take now, even though they're legit. they legit, but you just don't have that experience could bait you down. Right. Because you saying, damn, I got to pay this bill. Oh, I got to do this. So I got to do it. I got kids or whatever. And you be like, your dream don't stop because you got kids. Your dream don't stop because you married. Your right. dream don't stop because you got a job. Like me. The definition of life. I, I told one young boy, he was like, man, I want to do this. I want to do that. But I got this gig. I said, let me tell you something, man. I said, and he was doing music. I said, if I was doing music right now and I ain't had no other source of income, I'll go get me a motherfucking job, right? At Guitar Center, somewhere with some stuff at that I can learn about while I'm on the job. Uh -huh. I stack my paper, and I mean, and me, I'm the type of person, I just wait until I can buy me a little piece by piece. Buy me a go online, buy me a used MacBook, buy me a used Apollo, buy me a used speaker, a uh, used mic. And I'll buy, and I, but, but I grind. See, people don't understand the job is just a stepping stone. You can hustle them just like you can hustle the streets. Right. You see what I'm saying? And you ain't got to jeopardize your freedom. But I think that a lot of times, we a motherfucker look at you, you a win, black. They look at you, you win. They look at your whole journey and say, I'm, there's no two motherfuckers on this planet who ever won in life did it the same way. Right. You see what I'm saying? Like, for instance, I was talking to, uh, me and Rug was having a conversation earlier this morning about Meek, right? And the right. conversation was crazy because we was talking about Meek. And I was like, damn, Rug, let me, you know, you because Meek was just talking, I was talking to Rug about how, we was talking about studio equipment, but we was talking about how he been around for so long. Like the rug that I know, none of y'all knew. I knew rug when he had one keyboard, like right. one fucking keyboard in the basement over Hunter Park. Right. Before I'm talking about this back when it was like five, six, seven rap groups in Philly, and and niggas, if you rap, you was corny. They didn't look at that. This back when Spade lived, straight up, you was a nut. This before rap became popular, and the rap star, rappers became the drug dealer to the people. Whereas though they looking at them like, oh, I want to be a dope boy. No, I want to be a rapper because they was able to epitomize and personify the street nigga. Uh -huh. So people looking at it like, this one, it was corny. So back then I was a hype man for Lyrical Tears, for Spade and them over at uh, Nice Town, right? Uh -huh. Shout out to Lyrical Tears and all that. It was like Lyrical Tears, Red Bull, Task Force, uh, 100X, Ram Squad. It, was, yep. it, was, it wasn't that many people. You know what I mean? You had the big people like Muhammad D, you had like uh 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 shout out to my man Nero, 2K Mobile, young black entrepreneur, cell phone store. I seen him get it out the mud. But you had you ain't had that many people, and I was just a hype man. And I was happy to be that. Right. I would I would heat the crowd up, you know what I mean? And Spade the one that taught me how to write 16, but back then, Ruggedness only had one keyboard, bro. I seen him go from one keyboard to signing with JMJ Records, Jam Master J Records. And then I go in his basement. This dude had a high power studio in his fucking basement. I'm talking about some like some of these labels got. It was in his basement when he moved over to Dunk. Like he moved over to uh fucking Logan. And he had this high, you go in his basement through the back. Back had clicking, everybody was going in there. But what I'm saying is, me and him was talking about Meek. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I had a couple studio sessions with Meek within like within the last couple months, like before this happened within a month span. I was in the studio with him in New York for like a couple of times. And I'm in the studio with him, right? Uh -huh. I've been around and we be around a lot of times, a lot of shit, but I never be in the studio with him. So I'm in this fucking studio with him and I'm like, is it me or is this nigga in here working like he's still in on Burke Street some fucking way like he broke and he eating rice and gravy from the Chinese store? Fuck me up. Yeah, Meek always had that. Listen, this motherfucker was in there working like, like he was trying to get a deal. I'm like, damn, is this nigga on or is he broke? 
Right. I'm talking about the hunger and the aggression that was in the studio. He keep playing it back, going, <sighs> lifting that up. No, throw that other joint on. Let me get to that one. Let me. I'm like, what the fuck is this? This nigga. I'm thinking. I right, listen. I like, didn't know. I didn't know if he was on. Because I'm. I'm looking at him like, is this nigga on something? Because this <laughs> nigga running like I'm running down the street, back and forth in the booth. He would turn this, hit this, put that on that. I'm like, what the? I'm talking about grind. And so Rug was like, no, that's how he was. And I said, what made him different? He said Meek knew his sound. Yeah, he said that. Meek. He said Meek knew his sound, and he wasn't. And he had people that just give him the beats. He knew his sound, so he had come in the studio. He already knew what he was. He wasn't trying to catch something. He wasn't trying to, every time he come, he wasn't mimicking what he just heard. Yeah, he wasn't trying to find something. Yeah. So I was like, so, so I just was like, just seeing the evolution of what happened is like, it's Her crazy. Different, difficult thing, too. That's it's crazy. I, I did a um, a track with, um, what's the what's the producer name uh, that made Balling? We Fly High. No lie. I don't know his name. That oh. was the shit. I don't know his name, but I remember I, that. I had a record with him, and he was trying to teach me. This was back all the way when that was, and he's like, you got a distinctive voice, but you got to learn how to find the pocket on each beat. I got to, he said, I can't just, some people got a, a, a voice like Ill, Freeway, Meek. They, they, they can go right in, and they can, they beat already automatically adjust to every beat. Mm -hmm. I have to switch my tone on certain beats. Not the style, just the tone to fit the beat. But I got a question for you that I that we was thinking about uh, earlier. And and we're going to, uh, after I ask you this question, see, the reason why I'm a little down right now, not how I'll be on my other joint, I just lost a homie. Just now. From, from Corona? No. Or oh, the streets? Yeah. Oh, that's deep. That's deep. Okay. I'm okay. Holding back tears while I'm talking, bro. Yeah, yeah. You, you seem a little, a little off. You know what I mean? Sorry, you know, my condolences to you, his family. And everybody involved, you know, yeah. uh, on both sides, because I always say both sides, because when one person loses a family member, another person can lose a family member through prison, through all types of shit. Or oh, they got to go on a run. They got to, you know, it just be, it just be, it's a traumatizing thing, you know, for me to see both sides, for me having, you know, my brother get killed, my homies get killed, and then seeing you know, my people come up, kill somebody. So you see both sides, especially when you uh, embrace the embrace the reality of life. And I'm real, I'm real transparent, and I'm real emotional when it comes to that. And um, and I really respect, I respect people' feelings and how they feel about that, especially family members. And it's like I think that uh, we become so hard that we only. We only want to respect a mother's pain when it's our homies. I respect everybody's mother's pain because that could be me and you. You see what I'm saying? Definitely. So it's it's just about like, you know, uh I always say, and I and I knew, I knew, I knew I was gonna be looked at as crazy. I knew that I was gonna be looked at as weird, but when I came home from prison, it was like I was willing to do any and everything to get a message across to our people that it costs too much to be a, you know, a criminal because I seen it on so many levels. I was a, when I was in jail, I wasn't this hardcore dude. I wasn't this tough dude. I wasn't this right. institute. I wasn't this hardcore prison or just a prison man, a jail man. I was a student in there studying a human reaction to incarceration. Uh -huh. So, it, it puzzled me when I could see this dude that's a gangster go crazy. This dude that was a big drug dealer wiping a kitchen table, you know, trying to get, you know, pay. And I'm like, damn, this dude. And then you hear a story, you hear a dude name, you be walking, he was like, that's the boy that with that song. He's like, yeah, that's him. Like, Motherfucker down there tap dancing to wipe the tables and work for the kitchen just to make it. Too, you get that 25 cent or whatever. So I was a dude that was like, I was just a messenger of a mindset. And I was coming back out here just to tell people like, yo, listen, this, this shit ain't no, fall the fuck back. That's why I wanna, I'm gonna fast forward to that, right? But let me go, let me go back for one second. Do you, do you believe, cause I believe this, do you believe that every single person have a small piece of self doubt? 
Man, listen, bro. Let me tell you something, man. <coughs> what do you what do you think? Honestly, you you I, ain't you ain't fucking human if you don't. Yeah, okay. You All listen, right. let me explain something to you, man. Man, listen, man. One of the the, the the hardest days for me during my prison time was when I was coming home because there's a fear there. There's a fear of I did, I promise a lot of people, I promise my family members. And it's like you convince yourself that you changed in jail, but you ain't changed until you've been faced with temptation and you hit them streets and you actually live change. See, a motherfucker could tell you, my grandma told me, a motherfucker could tell you, oh man, you know, I'm gonna do this when I come home, I'm gonna do that. Tupac said it best, penitentiary pack with promise makers. I was realized the precious time these bitch niggas you wasteless and institutionalized. And uh -huh. you would say, I change, I change. And I was one of them dudes that was like, man, I, I tell my grandma, grandma, she checked me on the con one day. She said, baby, I heard that before. Yeah. Uh, and right before she hung up the phone, I was like, damn. So when you come home from prison, you so fucking scared. That's the scariest day when you're walking out. You know, you get up in the morning because now, showtime, the curtains come back and you on the stage and you got to perform. And you better not let that crowd down, the family, the friends, the people that was there for you, the associates. You better not let them down. And I'm saying letting them down ain't about doing all these things for them. It's about doing things for yourself and not going back, right. not getting killed. Uh, not being on the street corner slanging as they driving by going to work and they seeing you and they saying, damn, man, you back out here at that already? So so it's like that doubt. That's what's up. Man, you know, whatever, listen. You know, whatever you're doing sometimes, if it's not going your way, if you've been doing it for years, if you feel like um, people not gravitating to your, your craft or whatever, you just like, man, can I do but a lot of times, a lot of times, self doubt though, black. You know how? This how? I, you do, and you see. The reason why I ask you that too is because a lot of people that I ask, they say, no, they they don't have they don't have no self doubt. I'm gonna tell you why. A lot of people like to go. I heard you say this before. Sometimes you say a lot of things that I think to myself, and I say my, to myself when I'm talking to other people. Some people think Wallow way is their way. Some people think Black the Neuro way is their way. Somebody think no. Jay-Z way is their way. So it seems like when <coughs> of, of power like Jay-Z and Diddy and Oprah or whatever, when they say certain shit to certain people, it's stick. And they think that that's how they're supposed to believe and they don't. Meaning this, I heard somebody say, I don't know if it was Will Smith or somebody, I'm not sure. Don't uh, plan A. Now, I heard a lot of people say this. You got a plan A, that's it. You don't have a plan B. Because if you got a plan B, then that means you think you're not going to make it or you're doubting yourself. You, there's, there's no plan B. There's no room for failure. That's how a lot of people think. I'm not knocking that. I don't think like that either. I believe it's a plan B. I got a plan for motherfucking A, B, C, and D. The reason why I say that is because if I was going straight for my motherfucking plan A, where would I be right now? Because my plan A, after all the drug shit, was to be a successful rapper. Now, I'm successful in rap to me because I got paid off it, and I still get paid off of it. But I mean, boom, mainstream, just everybody know me, just Yo Gotti, just Big Pun, just Fat Joe. You feel what I'm saying? I'm mainstream. That My plan A would have failed. So now my plan B is fuck it. They like these movies and I'm making money off that. Let me do that. And I think that's it's smart to have a plan B, me personally, because why you think athletes go to college? That's their plan B. They need that. What if happened if you, my man Shafi, you know Shafi, he played football for a year in the NFL, then caught turf toe. If he had a college degree, then what? Now he's a he's a sports agent. But Pete this. Yeah, I know so yeah, I know what that is. <laughs> he lets you, yeah. That's my guy. You, you, you know what's crazy? One thing people don't understand about me, they see me, they see what I do. They don't understand that I'm AP. And I'm saying I'm AP is I'm an all-purpose month. I'm all-purpose. I got a culinary, I, you know, graduated culinary school when I was in jail. My whole thing was I'm the type of dude that could go downtown Philadelphia, slide up in a restaurant, operate that motherfucking dish room, and then the next thing you know, I'll be prep cook or something. I'm getting on that cook line. The next thing you know, I'm going to position that to get into another position. I'm a positional, like, I know how to position myself to position myself. 
because I ain't one of them dudes that's stuck on some, oh, no, no, no. See, one thing about me, I'm never not going to be doing what I want to be doing. And what I want to be doing is what I need to be doing to get to the next level. It ain't no, I'm too cool. Like, one thing about me, I don't give a fuck where I go at. If I got to put the ice, go get the igloo, put the ice in the water, in the water, and put the cups, and put the water in the cups and pass it to the players, and I'm going to be a part of that team, game time, let's get it. You right. motherfucking, I'm going to be the best water boy in the motherfucking league, whatever league I'm in. Because I'm, I'm, I'm not caught up on that bullshit. Yeah, and, I, I, and I understand that anything, that, of, anything can stop. Anything can stop, anything can not. So you got to position yourself and have multiple shit going on. I'm talking about multiple shit. Because cause it's like, everybody think like, you know, like for instance, the, like for instance, the world stop. Yeah. And when I'm saying the world stop, I'm saying like, Everybody is just like, everybody, everybody is just like stuck. Hey, baby. Everybody is just like stuck. You see what I'm saying? And it's like, and you, and you see people shuffling right now. Uh, 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 uh. Some people put their eggs in all one basket. But once again, everybody, everybody can't be a boss. Everybody can't be a CEO. That's not reality of life. You know what this shows me right here? Uh, j just to say what you, I'm going to touch on two things. The first thing you said was um, um, about being, purpose. being the best water boy and stuff like that. That's how I choose people that's going to be a part of my team with my productions when I'm making movies. You got people that ain't did shit. They think they did something because they <laughs> fucking web series, more bullshit, and they be like, I ain't no fucking extra. I don't want to be no extra. I don't want you like, nigga, you... What do you mean? Men men and women tell me this. I'm like, how you don't want to be an extra? I'll be an extra. You gonna be an extra. You better be on the extra and try. My my thing would be I'm gonna go on this set to be an extra and I'm gonna if I'm in the bank robbery scene, I'm gonna make the most fucking scared face and the best reaction. So when they see me, they be like, Damn, he he was all right when he did it. Or whatever. If I'm the waiter, if I'm the fucking guy in the background talking, eating my food behind you eating your food, I'm gonna be doing the fake talking and do it to my best ability. So somebody might notice something. You feel what I'm saying? So they 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 get caught up in that bullshit, like you said, that they don't want to be a uh, 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 extra or some shit like that. And that that's kind of weird to me. Now I'm gonna go back to what you said: how the world stopped. The, the the mind frame that I've been in now, because change is different. When you change, I always tell my brother. Change come with a lot of bullshit. When you truly, really changed and you know in your heart that you changed, as far as my change was leaving the fucking streets alone. I was, I, I don't give a fuck what nobody said, but niggas know me and they know what I was. The people that know me, they know how knee deep I was. They know I didn't give a fuck. They know I stayed strapped. They know I got money. They can say whatever the fuck they want, but I left it all alone and I found something that made it. I told my brother, because he said, how'd you get out? I said, you got to find something that you love more than the game. For me, that was my children. I don't know what it is for somebody else. You feel what I'm saying? But it shows you when when when, it, when you change, you already, it comes with people think you're lying. They think you're soft now. They think you you hiding money. They think you're lying. Whatever the case may be. But with this COVID-19 shit and it's stopping, it shows you right here what I already knew in my motherfucking brain. I always thought like that. That's why I'm not materialistic. I can go buy all that bullshit now. I still got a couple hours to do, buy jewelries and chains and shit. I don't give a fuck about that because I did it already. It shows you right now. If this shit got worse with the COVID-19 and shit never opened up, what the fuck is good is your money for you now? What's good is your fucking car? What's good is your car? What good is your money? What good is your mansion? It, 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 like I always say, once you once once you check, you on that fucking drum, you on that metal table, that tin table, and you wrapped up, and all your, your all your shit is wherever it was at. The money that you had somewhere is in this spot. Nobody ever gonna find the baby mom got this, the wife got that, the side chick got that, your homies got this. Everybody got your jewels and shit if they next to them. It mean nothing. It don't mean shit. You can go. You can, I'm not saying don't strive for success, but you got to know how to understand what comes first to me you feel what i'm saying what what comes first to me my family came from my daughters came first and i knew the end was death or jail now i, I paved the path so it was, whereas though um you know anybody that's on some other bullshit they just hating but i don't have no no, no problems you feel what i'm saying and it feels it feel good i'm always gonna be me never gonna be chumped never gonna play me never gonna i'm a man first but i'm just not in the street so that shows you right now, man, material shit. You can pull up on a girl and a motherfucking ghost right now, a wraith, and they'll, they'll, they'll go fucking crazy, right? 
and jump <laughs> over, right? 10 years from now, 10, 15, 20 years, and 20 years go like that, nigga, trust me, because I was just fucking 20, and I'm 40, and four. <laughs> so 10 years, the car that I was driving 20 years ago, I get laughed off the fucking face of the earth if I pulled up on somebody with that shit. So that same race, that, 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 a, a 2020 race, you bring it back in fucking 2050, it's a piece of shit. It don't look like shit. They got the new spaceship reef. It don't. It don't look like nothing. The materialistic shit was never nothing for me. So you got to know how to adapt to certain shit. I think you got to always maintain your grind. You got to stay hungry, and and you got to realize what count and what don't. And you and you said something. And one thing I say, I'm gonna go back to this is, <sighs> you got to know just how to play the part, just to get in the building sometimes. And you got to know how to. Be comfortable with who you are. I remember one time I was on my way. I was going somewhere. And Gil hit me. He was like, yo, cuz, where you at? I said, man, we need you. And you you won't remember this, but you, I don't know if you was there that day. I said, well, he said, man, I'm out Southwest, man. We shooting this movie, right? I said, cool, what you, what you, what's going on? I shot, shoom, shot over there. Now, this is my cousin. We do all this stuff together. But he called me to be a part of a movie and be like two, three minutes in it. You see what I'm saying? The mm, company right. with him and Tiz. Yeah, Gray's app, yeah. I pulled right up, got it off, and, and kept it moving. It wasn't no big thing. Cause I am not no ego maniac. I'm not right. on no trip. My whole thing, my whole thing is about just making it happen and doing real shit out here. And bringing value, you see what I'm saying? Cause if you don't bring value to value, you devalue value. So I just mm. want to bring value to things. I'm not caught up in all these things. And just like you said, me, I'm not caught up in all this material shit and all that. I just like I just like technology. I like to create. I like graphics. Uh, I like to eat a nice meal. Yeah, that's I like to I like to listen to music and drive by myself places and all that shit. Other than that, that's what counts. I'm for not that's caught up in all this bull. I don't really care. That's what you love more than the bullshit. Mm -hmm. You even told me one time. I told you. I think you came up. You started doing the shirts. That's how you know I'm not bullshit. I came right out with the shirts. I'm killing shirts. I said, bring me some of them drinks on and grab some of them. Mm -hmm. And I told you something, but I, was, I wasn't trying to be like, because at this point, you was just on your, on, on the top of elevating. And I was talking to you out there, and I was like, damn, bro, you came home, and you did that a lot. And I said, I'm done with the game. You was like, mm -hmm. yeah. I was like, yeah, man. I, I said, I feel good just being able to throw my motherfucking daughter in the air. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you were talking about your kids. You said, I'm going to use that. I'm going to tell somebody that shit. He said, that, he said that's, that shit right there. That's one of the best things I heard since I'm out. I'm like, yeah. Like, because yeah. It's, it's true. I can't, I can't. I got seven daughters, man. Grown daughters now. A 20 they year count old. They on you. And, and, and I'm buying them cars and I'm getting them this and I'm doing that for them. It feels so good. I can't raise them from that jumpsuit, bro. I can't raise them from that five joint. You know what I'm saying? I can't raise them from the ground. Fuck no. So... That that's 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 goes back to the same thing. You 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 find whatever your relaxation is, whatever your happiness is. It wasn't material. It was this, that, and the third. And that's the best thing for you. The sooner motherfuckers learn about that, the better because all that shit play out. It all play out. It it, it don't. You know what I'm saying? It don't stick around. And and we gonna fast forward to what me and you was talking about um on the phone earlier when I called. My frustration comes from people. From, from dudes not listening when it comes to the street stuff. Like guys that I see in the hood. And I was talking to Cassidy about it too on here. He was like, people want to, they want to see to believe, which is true sometimes. But I said, what about the people that do see? Not everybody else. A lot of people might look at Black Nero and say, oh man, he wasn't doing this, he wasn't doing it. I don't give a fuck about them. I know what I was doing. And I know what I am doing. But the people straight from my whole hood, and not just a block radius, because I got the whole uptown pay attention to me, right? How could you, how do you get across to niggas that's still going the same path that I just went and I'm blessed to still be here? I got a bullet in my fucking head. I've been shot at a gilling fucking times and they think it's going to be different with them. Like, no, nigga, you're going to die or you're going to go to jail. Just like the old head used to come to the fucking school when you was back in school and talk. Mm -hmm. he, he, I just come home from doing this and doing that. And you're like, oh, hey, whatever. You feel what I'm saying? That nigga was trying to tell you exactly what he saw. The cycle repeats. People don't want to listen, and and it, and it fucks you up when you when you when you get a. It's real crazy. It's real crazy. It's actually moronic, and I'm gonna say this because of this. 
The same way you didn't listen when you was young to the old heads, they don't listen now. So you gotta you gotta be mindful and understand that. Huh? How do you find a different fucking angle to this make the whole twist up? I reach a lot of the young cats, but I reach a lot of them sliding up on them, hollering at them. And it's a lot of um it's a lot of trauma going on. You dig what I'm saying? Trauma from a lot of these cats been abused, abused. A lot of their interaction with older cats in their life been fucked up from the rip. Their dad wasn't there for them. Dudes came through them houses when they was a young boy, taking advantage of their mom. So their looks and their approach of an older black man is already suspect. Right. So you, so an older black man trying to be a authoritative figure and they never had in their life, they're like, nigga, if you don't get out of here, and then you got all that, right? You got all the aggression. You got all the shit that happened, all the abuse, all the letdown by older black men. Peep game. Your dad leave. or he in jail? He leave your mom. or he on drugs? The dudes has come through. You know, they come through just taking advantage of your mom. You in the room as a little boy in the back door looking as your mom argue with this nigga or whatever she's going through. She's crying. You see that. And then as you grow up even more, you just keep seeing dudes treat your mom like shit. And then when you slide off them steps, the first motherfucker that put a gun or a package in your hand is, a, is a, another black man, an older dude. Young boy, go. So, my, my, my. so hold up, hold up. So, 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 so your, your, whole, your whole journey could be fucked up. And that's what a lot of us, some of us is not, that's not the case. And then one of the biggest things that I had to realize in life, and I'm going to tell you what I try to do. Everybody along clock come on at a different motherfucking time. So right. what I learned was, I'm trying to catch the ball. When I'm dropping my message, I'm trying to catch the ball who alarm clock might come on the day or tomorrow and court right. that shit. Like, damn. Because you got some people, their alarm clock only gonna come when somebody blow their brains out or when the judge is hitting that gavel and they giving them that fucking time. And they right. realize, god damn. So you got different strokes for different folks. And some people, I didn't have young cats tell me on some real shit. Low, I respect you, OG. I fuck with you, but I'm not on that. I'm. I, I got this only way. Only way I can rock. Now, if you can substitute, if you can substitute this this couple of hours or the adrenaline rush I get out of being a street nigga for whatever you got going on, solid. But I understand what you're taking. That shit for my little brother or my little cousin, but it ain't for me. And you know what I say, solid man. I gave it to you though, right? He be like, yeah. That's all I need to know. Do you believe change? change is a, is a constant struggle? Man, listen, man, you got to understand this. Y'all looking at a motherfucker. L listen, I'm 40 years old. I'll be 41 June 21st. I spent five years in juvenile system, and I spent 20 years in the penitentiary. I spent more time inside of cells and facilities than I did free on the planet. Now, I'm telling you this to tell this. I got locked up so many times, I, I lost count. I didn't get it right right now, so I understand this. But I'm just trying to activate and evoke a thought in these young cats' heads. I'm just trying to evoke a thought because I holler at the young cats, the older cats. They already they 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 got it figured out. They stuck uh -huh. already. The 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 uh the the younger cats is still easily influenced. And they trying to figure out what direction they want to go, and they still got a chance to switch it up. But it's like I'm just trying to evoke a thought in your brain that nobody never gave you, and just so happened I'm able to give you this delivery. Because I speak a language of noun and I wear a uniform of noun and I'm just trying to get this shit to you because one of the, the, the emotional moments that I had when I was in prison, when I was ready to leave, when I seen one of my homeboys and he told me some of the real shit, he said, homie, I ain't never coming back. Right. Put some wisdom, put some ism on my kid if you see him and just put, but it was, it, it was bigger than him just telling me that. For his kid, it was about for a lot of people's kids. It was about for a lot of homies is dead. It was about for a lot of boys that I walked the penitentiary check or I never met in my life that's in the penitentiary or they dead and I operated in the same street environment as them. I don't care if they was in Compton. I don't care if they was in New Orleans. I don't care if they was in Miami. I don't care if they was in Harlem. I don't care if they was on the south side of Chicago. I don't care if they was in North Philly or Pittsburgh. It's a different name, but it's the same thing going on, man. It's a different slang going on. You see right. what I'm saying? But everybody is, a, you know, you got tough guys, you got players, you got con people, you got finessers, you got scammers, you got snitches, you got you got everything. It's just the game the same. So all that is just a different name. But 
I know that it's this dude right now, right, who's sitting in San Quentin uh -huh. that I never met in my motherfucking life. But his son or his daughter is watching me every motherfucking day. Right. He probably went to jail. He probably doing life. He probably was a gangbanger in, uh, you know, L.A. And they say, Dad, you know, I watched this guy. You see what I'm saying? He he tell me the same thing you be telling me every time I come to visit you. He he you you he did time too. So I ain't gonna get anybody. I can't. You know, God don't save everybody. I don't so, care what religion you believe in. He don't God don't save everybody because everybody ain't gonna get it. I went and talked to St. Gabe's a few times and all the other juvenile joints, and I had people write me in my DM and tell me, uh still contact me with me to this day to tell me they they uh they took heed and they listened and they still what you call it. You feel what I'm saying? So when you do get a couple, it's cool. I don't know where the rest of them at or whatever. But um, that, that's the thing about what, what, what the change too, right? I'm going I'm to uh, uh, address two things. Let me give you two two stories. Well, one story is personal. This was is for this one. Things that used to bother you don't bother you. For instance, talking to you. You, you right about that. I don't even fuck. Like, like, listen, man, I'll be called eight. I don't I wish I had, this is what I wish I had. I wish I had a way to let you know how much of a fuck I don't get. Like, reading the comments while I'm talking to you, somebody on here, fake page, probably somebody from my way. It's always one of them nut-ass niggas. Talking shit, it, it doesn't, like, if it be like, yo, bro, I'm going I'm to address it because they, the, they want the attention, so I'm going to give them the light. I don't care. It doesn't matter what you like. No matter what you say, when I get off this phone, God willing, I'm still around. I'm gonna still go. I'm gonna go kiss my kids. I'm gonna go eat what I feel like eating. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna chill. You know what I'm saying? I'm not worried about nothing. So it's like that shit right there. That's the type of shit. That's one thing. I I, I don't give a fuck about. Not even just them. I don't give a fuck about the fake page niggas talking. I don't give a fuck about the real. I don't give a fuck about. Who don't like the music? Who don't like the movies? Who don't like this? Because you always gonna have that that page. No, I don't give a fuck about that. So I'm gonna leave that alone. You got your attention. There you go. And I, and I keep talking. Second, this is a story that happened with my daughter. She she's 19, and she was she was. Uh, this just happened like a month ago. <laughs> going back and forth with this guy. She, I call her. She's going back. She's going to go get a straining order. Call her back. Her number not on. She changed the number. All this other shit. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on, right? So she called me, dad, the guy called me a bitch. Uh, dad, the guy I'm messing with said this and that. Third. And I'm just like, I'm not really getting into it, right? Because it's still domestic, even though it's my baby. You know how that usually go. Mm -hmm. She said, he just put a, oh, he just, nigga, he just put a, a a piece of paper on my window saying, well, since we ain't together, I'm going to just kill you and kill myself. I said, give me the number. I said, give me the little guy. Oh, number. man. Now, I'm going to tell you how I handled this shit. And I, I, it's so crazy that I didn't. This is never how it would have been handled. Um, I call. He picks up the phone. And I say, hey, this is uh, this Rozzy Blip Dad. He say, what's up? I'm going to call you back in five minutes. Right? I said, all right. I hung the phone up. He called back in five minutes. So he said, hello, what's up? I said, damn, man, uh, let me talk to you uh, about something, right? I said, you know, you know who I am, right? He said, yeah, I know who you are. I said, all right, listen. I said, so my, my kids mean everything to me. I said, but this is what I'm going to do. I said, I'm going to talk to you like this. Y'all arguing back and forth. You calling her out her name. Fine. Even if y'all get into a little shoving match here and there, people talk all that shit. You just my daughter. I'm gonna do it, man. That's just how it, it be like that sometimes. Real, realistic. As long as you don't, you know what I'm saying. You get what I'm saying. So I'm like, all right. I said, but when you start putting notes and shit saying you're gonna kill something and kill yourself, bro, that that stuff happens. So I can't take that lightly. I said, now nah, I'm willing to die 90 times for my motherfucking daughter, and I'm willing to go to jail and do life or the death penalty for my daughters. Real rap, right? I said, but I don't want to go that route, and I don't want you to go this route. So I said, how old are you? 19. I said, dog, in a couple years, maybe two, three tops, you won't even be thinking about my fucking daughter. You're going to kill yourself. You you got a lot of life to live, or you're going to kill my daughter, and then you're definitely going to have to do something because one of us is going to die after that, me or you, or go to jail. 
So you're going to go through all of that over a girl. I end up giving a nigga game more so than how I would have got on the phone seven, six, seven years ago. It would have been different. It would have, and I'd have fucked my whole situation up maybe. You feel what I'm saying? So I end up talking to this nigga on the phone for an hour where he said, he act like he wanted to tell me shit. And then he, he, he was like, I just want to, no, never mind, never mind. I said, dog, talk to me. He's like, end up saying, yeah, because I got a daughter. I said, so think about your daughter. How old is your daughter? He said, two. I said, all right, my nigga, so you got a daughter. You feel what I'm saying? I said, so at the end of the day, I'm the type of nigga. You, I said, if you got problems, he said, man, I don't really got nobody. I don't got shit. I don't, I, and I ain't had no place to stay, man. Your daughter was letting me sleep in her car. She was chill. I was, she was all I had. I let her hear all my dark secrets and tell her this, that, and the third, and she knew I needed her. I said, well, listen, man, it ain't the first time and the last time your heart going to get broke over some shit. You feel what I'm saying? Like, so at the end of the day, you still don't want to do that. I said, the, the, ask me, I thought I would never fall out of love with my fucking high school girlfriend. I thought that's who I was going to spend the rest of my entire fucking life with. You feel what I'm saying? We broke up. I'm sick. Mm -hmm. Literally. You feel what I'm saying? But it's like now it's fucking 20 fucking years later. It's like <laughs> you've been a fool. You didn't get a chance to live life. So my point to the story is I end up giving the young boy game to the point like, yo, if you need me, call me. If you want to just ride around, you want to talk, you want to get something to eat, call me, bro. Let's talk. Let's do something. I don't want to throw it out the window. Then I called my daughter and told her what it was and let her know she was upset. But she got over it because I always break it down to my daughter so dope that they understand what I'm saying. I'm looking at it from a man's point of view and his point of view. And then I'm looking at it from a relationship point of view. And then not just that's my daughter's point of view. Like, fuck what's going on. That's my daughter. Because there's been times my daughter said some shit and some ha something happened. And I done went off the deep end. And then some uh, OGs called me that I know from the neighborhood and say, bro, it didn't even happen that way. And then I got to call her back and say, well, why you ain't say you need this part out? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I was looking at it from every every angle. Of, of the, so that still go back to, you know, the change aspect of things or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, all right, let's get on some on a, on a lighter note. Let's get on a lighter note. As far as uh, people that want to, and this is what you give daily. You get this 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 type of. Um, this, this type of game daily. For the person who is sitting on that couch, right? That you're saying, what you doing? You're sitting on that couch. Why you ain't chasing your dream? There's people that can that can write books. And I said, they got 13, 27 fucking books in the house, but don't, don't take them off the paper and put them into the book form and put them out. They got scripts, but they don't turn them into series or short films or movies. They got raps, but they just got a book of raps and they don't go to the studio. They go to the studio, don't put it out. What do you tell... A person like that. What would Wallo say if you ran into a homie and he's like, yeah, man, Wallo, I want to do what you're doing. I want to run. I want to tell people that they can do this and they can do that, but I just don't, I just don't do it. Pull the fucking trigger. Like me, see, one thing about me is, like, I always tell people this. You're not afraid to fail. You're afraid of the motherfucker seeing you fail. A lot of our shit and why we don't move out is based off of people seeing us not do it right at all. I, listen, I keep telling people this shit. Only thing I had was a motherfucking a phone and the motherfucking, I didn't even have a tripod when I first getting busy. And I just got busy. But I didn't, I, you know, I really didn't give a fuck. And what I'm saying is like, you know, I, I was willing to go through everything to get to where I was trying to go. And meaning, like, you had people calling me all type of shit. This nigga's a weirdo. This nigga's a clown. This nigga running down the street. He, lay, he doing this. This nigga doing too much. This, that, and third. And when I used to hear it, right? I used to go back because I was living in my grandma's crib at this time in the middle room, right? On a twin size mattress, right? No TV, no nothing in that motherfucker. All I had was my phones and my little notes. I used to write shit in and all that. And what was, so, what was so great about it is I used to go back, take my shower, go in my room, close my little door, lay on the bed, and I used to just be laughing like, yeah. Because when they used to talk about me or say crazy shit like this nigga tripping or whatever they was on, well, it was so great to me was the fact that I was winning because when they think you crazy in the inner cities of America or they think you want some nut shit, you ain't got to worry about nobody getting in your fucking way. Exactly. I was like, bet. They, they <laughs> lost. Because I just did all this time in jail and I come home and I'm like, 
okay, everybody's over there. Everybody want to be accepted by this type of crowd. Every You got to wear this. Like in the ghetto, like I said, you got to wear this. You got to go here. You got to eat here. You got to think this way. You can't. There's no independent thought in the hood a lot of times. Anybody with independent thought in the ghetto, they want some weird shit. They want some nut shit. Anybody say, no, I, ain't, I don't go out. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I'm on my own time. I like to be in the crib. I like to read. A, what? You want some weird shit. Right. Oh, you want to smoke hookah? You want some weird shit. You want pop perks? You want some weird shit. Well, soon you as want... you work, don't, don't give a fuck what nobody say. Like back what I was saying, that, yeah. that helps a lot. When you don't care about what people say about you because you know what's going on. Yeah. You know what's going on. I know what's going on. People can sit there and say, I get I get that shit all the time. Sometimes my your movie was trash on Netflix. It was listen, trash. But listen, uh, let me show you something. Let me check I got for that. I don't give a fuck what you think. My let thing. me show you. I'm gonna show you like, some real shit. I'm gonna show you some real shit that's gonna change everything, and it ain't even gonna fucking matter. Watch this. This is this is the real shit right here. What is it? That? And 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 if people don't ever, I think if people don't get embarrassed, they feel like that too. I don't. I've never got. I don't get embarrassed. I don't, I don't, <laughs> I feel like I'm me. I don't get embarrassed. Oh, Look, yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I but saw, listen, it's seven. Yeah. It's seven point seven billion people on this planet. Everybody ain't gonna fuck with your shit. Look how many right. people. Look, look how many people was born today. Uh huh. Forty million. Yeah, I saw you putting that. Born up. this year. Look how many people was born today. Look, look how many people to death this year. Deaths today. Look, so so what I'm saying is this. What I'm saying is, oh, that's healthcare. This real life. This real time. Yeah, it don't matter what your opinion is. No, but not just that. This is what you got to understand. Everybody ain't your audience, and everybody ain't your people. Exactly. Like, this is what I tell a lot of people. Like, they be like this. The people well, why that they, but this is, why, why, why do you feel like, you, you, like, if, if my thing is, how don't you feel like a nut? How do you, how do you, like, like, how do you, don't feel like a, a a sucker worrying about what this person doing or saying this about somebody project or talking to I, if you don't like it that's cool you feel what i'm saying but it's people that that waste a lot of time and energy on bullshit you're not gonna bid off me you're not gonna get no laugh you're not gonna get no energy out of me you're not gonna get me to go crazy over the shit you feel what i'm saying but it, it's like look who can sit back and say I'm gonna make a fake page and I'm gonna talk from it. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say I don't like this that he's doing or what she's doing and ain't doing. I'm just gonna say it, even if I don't if I don't like it. That's cool, but they just want to say like, what what does it change? It's not going to change nothing. It's never if you don't think if you don't understand that some people never gonna stop, then you you crazy because it's never gonna stop. You know what I'm saying? I'm Sometimes you just you just gotta you just gotta take it like this and say. Everybody's not gonna fuck with your movement, and that's cool. And uh, you got, like I said, everybody's not your audience, and that's just some people. Some people like they voice their opinion, and uh, you just gotta keep going and keep doing your thing. It's a form of advertisement that I say, you know what I mean? Uh, you know what I mean? But at the end of the day, like even with music, like a lot of people do music and they feel as though they ain't getting the traction or whatever, and they just want to give up. And they say this, they be like this, oh man, they ain't this, oh me, me. A motherfucker might tell, man, you listen to me. You don't listen to my shit. Or you listen to this person. You listen to Black right. Mirror. You don't listen to my shit. This is what we got to understand. That man audience might not be your audience. Right. You might have an audience in front of you. You neglecting them because you chasing that person audience. You got 200. You got 500 people following you. Lock in on. Go have an event. You know what I mean? Uh, get a little space. Invite 25 or 50 of them there. Give them a great time, and they're going to go tell it. They're going to run tell it. Stop right. focusing. Like, like you know, listen, man. It was people. i never forget. I had a conversation with this, this guy, right? He had a, a 100,000 followers at the time. I probably had, like, I probably was at, like, 37,000. He had over 100,000 followers. So he was like, yo, man, how do you get, you know, how do you do, uh, how do you get paid to do, like, because, you know, I you know, I'm one of the first boys that was doing commercials out here. Mm -hmm. All the, you know, business. He said, I said, he said, how much do you charge? I told him my price at the time. He had all these followers. He wasn't even making money. When I showed him what I get, he was like, what? How the fuck? I said, no, I brought by you. I created something. He said, what did you create? I said, I'm the first boy really out here doing these commercials. And for these restaurants, nobody was doing that. They wasn't, mm -hmm. that wasn't, 
I was doing it for free for so long, and then it turned into business. I turned it into business. And he was just like, damn. So he had all these motherfucking people, but he couldn't do what I was doing. You know why? Because he didn't understand. Like, people be having, there's people I had that got millions of followers that's dead broke. Yeah, I know. They think that shit make money. They think the following and the, the likes. No, and you got to bring, you got to bring value. You got to understand marketing. You got to understand advertisement. You got to understand value. You got to understand business. Like you got to, this shit got to be like, like when you, a person might see, be like, damn, no, I'm a business person. Wallow 267 is Wallow 267 LLC. It's Wallow two, it's Life of Wallow 267 LLC. It's Million Dollars Worth of Game LLC. So, right. so people don't understand. I'm, I'm a, a walking business. Yeah, people don't even understand how far along you be. Like, no, they don't, they don't dig it. Like they don't, it's like they think like for years when I was first rapping, I was screaming F A Entertainment. Shit didn't even exist. Nigga told me F A A A. And a nigga said told me, you know, I can go on YouTube and take all your shit. I can I can copyright. I can put my shit under your company. You and you won't even have that shit. Mm -hmm. well, I've been got my business right. You know what I'm saying? You gotta you gotta have your business right. I got I get checks because I I file taxes off of the shit that I do. Off of movies, off of music. I get checks every month. I make money off of it. And people think that, you know, it's, it's, it's just you just running around screaming some shit when I be saying won't quit ENT. Mm -hmm. won't quit but this shit is real. I write you a fucking check. I, mm -hmm. I buy a whole fucking $10,000, $12,000 worth of equipment or, or, or some shit for my movie and I write that shit off. Yep. But they don't, they don't, they don't understand the game. They think it's just, oh, I can just rap or I can just act. I'm just being in forever. I'm gonna be an Instagram model forever. They swear to grams. I, that's another thing. The way COVID went down, I, if this fucking internet shut down, niggas be nobody. Some people be <laughs> nobody. It'd be fucking be crazy. Because be crazy. I know because I was here before it. Mm -hmm. There ain't too many people in that generation that was born with this shit. They was born and it was Instagram. They was five with the phone in their hand. We didn't have that shit. We can't. Mm -hmm. I can't do an era with no phones. I can't do a phone with beepers. You had to make it to a landline. No, but man, the beeper was anything. They, they knew who I was, so you got to know. You, how do you build? How do you know how to adapt or build yourself before? I used to write on walls, Wallow Two Six Seven. I used to go all up and down the, 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 the Germantown line, right, from all the way down to. I bring it, and I just always write my name. And I remember one time I, I was hollering this girl from Uptown, right. And, and I told him my name, right? You ain't coming to town. You ain't coming. Listen, listen, man. Listen, listen. I'm gonna just say this though. All due respect, right? Well, well all due respect. I, it was right. She lived right around Simon's playground. You see, what I'm saying. I'm gonna say this. Things. A lot of these neighborhoods from all over the city, from all parts. A lot of them, northwest. A lot of them wasn't as treacherous as down where as though you could come through. You wasn't like nobody was. You know what I mean? Nobody was on that time of just, nigga, what you, you know what I mean? Like, you, people wasn't casing you out like that. And right. if you did, one thing about me that was great, my track game was extraordinary if it came to that. <laughs> nigga, what you doing around here? <laughs> <laughs> I'm out. But, but you know, when you're going to see a girl, you, you, you ready to risk it all. You know what I'm right. saying? You ready to risk it. I was, listen, I'm risking all. I'm going over that crib. Your mom ain't there. Oh, we gonna watch a movie? What's she, you could've, she, could've she working over? You she working all night? Ass uptown like that. What'd you say? Could have got yourself in trouble sliding uptown to see that girl. Listen, like that. It was back in the day, bro. It wasn't like with these young fellas. That was even worse. No, 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 no. Shit, back in the day was way worse. No, no. Listen, these young Thundercats uptown. This totally uptown. Is, listen, let me tell you something. I was listen uptown. I remember this no bullshit. I was in prison, right? And. It was like months on and months straight. Everything that was going on was uptown in that newspaper when it used to come through. Because we got the Daily News is upstate. I was like, yo, what the fuck? You saw Forrest Avenue a lot. Listen, man. No, nah, they said Forrest Avenue. It was a lot of pocketbook snatches up Forrest Avenue. I'm just saying. I, 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 it was snatches. all the mother spots uptown. They, they, I was like. Never a fucking. <laughs> but no, so listen. I go up and holler at her. I remember when I first talked on the phone, he like, I know you from somewhere. I said, no, she said, I know that name. Cause I used to just write Wallow. She said, like, Wallow, you gotta be, your name be, I said, yeah. Like, so you, you, or you had to be, you had to be 
you you know, it, it was you had to go places for people to really know you. It, you couldn't sit in the crib and get rep. Hey, on and you put your fucking phone on. You All couldn't right, do that. We got about three, four minutes. Our phone, I, just, I knew our phone yeah, was coming I mean. dope to the point it seemed like we was only talking for five minutes. Yeah. Right? Because they uh -huh, go ahead. Yeah. Five years. I call Wallow tomorrow. It's five years, fast forward, five years. I call <laughs> you. I don't want to hear probably here, maybe there, I might. Da, 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 da. Where is Wallow if God allows Wallow to be blessed to see another five years? I call you tomorrow just like I called you today, Wallo. What's up with you? Where you at? What you doing? You retired? You I'm still be, I'm gonna you... still be going in. I'm gonna be living in Salt Lake City. Uh and I'ma still be going hard. And I, and I mean multi, I'm talking about probably media company, hundred million dollar media company, making it happen. All right. off, and I, and I and I did it all off the phone. And you're strong, bro. Cause you did some shit that people can't do. People don't understand. You gotta have strength. You gotta have strength to change. You gotta have strength to ignore it. You gotta have mm -hmm. to endure certain things. You gotta have strength to go to move on. You gotta have strength to adapt. So you, for you to, I did motherfucking three years, nigga, and I felt like I was dying. I felt like I did twenty. So yeah. Twenty years. A whole a year is too long in prison. Listen, I used to be. Listen, I don't man. think they understand a day for like a. I used to be. I used to be. I used to be. And that joint, man, I remember it was sometimes, man, when my body was hurting, I didn't even want to get up, bro. Because it was just like, it was like, I did, you'd be like, damn, I did motherfucking, I did three years, man. I got all these years to go. You just be laying there. I'd be like, oh, I can't. Would you look up and I'm, count that day by mistake? I mean, like, uh, nigga, they closed the door. I said, damn, this is my first day, and I got three. It's my first day. Mm -hmm. so like I was like, this is my first day, and then a year go by, and then they drop the ball. You see everything on TV, you're like, damn, I got this man. And I, me, I'm like, I got two years left, and it felt like, you know, what I'm saying, I was in there so long, man. I thought I had life. I just stopped looking at accounting like that. So I, I was like, I, I started yeah, counting again when I get like 36 months left. Other than that, I was just in there doing my time, man. And I was because it was like everybody, all my cellies always left. It was all, you know, it yeah, was somebody yeah. was always leaving, and yeah. I'm just be like, I was, I just up. used to be. Like, yeah, I just used to be like, damn, man. You know, you just be like, I just be waiting for my next new book to come in a magazine. I was happy with that when that would come. And I was you know just you, cool with that. You was happy with the magazine. Yeah, and that's, that was it. <laughs> <laughs> right, listen, bro, we got one minute left, man. I appreciate you, homie, man. Don't that's you know, I tell you, squad, just do what you do, man. Keep doing what you're doing. I'm you never stop. You ain't got to worry about no. I ain't got to tell you fuck haters and this, that, and the third, man. You're doing a phenomenal job, and you are inspiring people, bro. Mm -hmm. You are an inspirational speaker. You're a nut-ass nigga, but you're, you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you see it. Yeah, I mean, you see it. You see that beast. You see that beast. I mean, go ahead. Tap in right now. Go check out Million Dollars River Game. Go check out there Where's you Wallow. You see it. Because they about to cut you right off. All off the muscle. You see that? <laughs> I mean... I'm in the chop shop right here. I'm hey, all in the chop. Well, be careful, man. Stay safe with this shit going on. Yeah, I ain't gonna listen, man. I'm listening. I'm in the spot. I'm in the lab right now. I'm in the chop shop. All right, my nigga. I'm gonna yeah. hit you. Well, all right, bet one. All right.